Valmatic is considered one of the leaders in producing air valves for the waterworks industry. The purpose of this training is to give you a basic understanding of how the Valmatic air valves compete in our marketplace and how they are used. Why do we need air valves? Well, all water contains a little bit of air and it tends to collect at high points in piping systems. As it collects at the high point, it causes a very large bubble which restricts flow and causes head loss in a flowing pipeline. The head loss can be so high from multiple high points that the pump cannot even produce enough pressure to produce flow. Also, when there's a power outage, if you don't have an air valve, you'll cause vacuum pockets at the top of your pipes, which cause, could cause water hammer and surges in your pipeline systems. So we provide air release valves, which are normally mounted at the high points of these types of pipelines. The first type of air release valve are our small air release valves, which come in two types. On the left is a simple lever type, like the model 15A or 22. They're normally open and release air at the, from the high point of the pipeline, but when the valve fills with water, the water lifts the float and closes off the valve. The second type of air valve works in similar fashion. That's like our model 38. It has a larger orifice and therefore needs a more complex lever type system to provide enough mechanical advantage for the weighted float to open the valve under pressure and release the air. Another type of air valve we make is an air vacuum valve. These valves have very large orifices from one half inch all the way up to 20 inch in diameter. Again, they are basically normally open and they exhaust air as the pipeline is filled. And then when the valve is filled with water, the float is raised automatically and the valve is closed so that no water escapes from the pipeline. But then when the pipeline is drained, the water is drained from the valve, which allows the float to drop and air to re-enter the pipeline. For more information on Air Valve Basics, we have a 12-minute YouTube video that you can watch on your desktop. If you try and drain a pipeline without air valves, as shown in these pictures, the resultant vacuum can collapse a thin wall steel pipe above ground. Ironically, at this Folsom Lake application, there was a pipe fitting right on the pipeline where they could have installed an air valve, but the engineer chose not to. A disaster like this could ruin your whole day. This is an example of a stainless steel air vacuum valve mounted on a pipeline. I think it's mounted on pipe discharge. In Palm Beach, which is Florida, there's a lot of salt laden air, hence they like stainless steel valves and fittings. The third type of air valve that we produce is a combination air valve, which comes in some different types. The one on the left is called a dual body because the main portion is an air vacuum valve and then connected to it with a ball valve and some piping is the air release valve, a model 38. Or as shown in the middle, we have a single body combination air valve like the 201C where there's the large orifice here and then a small orifice drilled through the stem of the plug of the valve. The larger company single body combination air valves like the model 206C and 208C actually have two floats, but they also have the two orifices, the large orifice for the air vacuum portion and a small orifice for the air release portion. These valves are normally open and they release air as the pipeline is being filled. But when the water lifts the float, it seals off so that no water escapes from the pipeline. When the pipeline is drained, the water level drops in the valve, the float drops, and the air valve opens to allow air to enter the pipeline. This is a photograph of a Model 201C single body combination air valve, which you can see has a single float. It's made typically of cast iron with all type 316 stainless steel trim. Here is one mounted in a vault. This particular one is in Gillette 
Wyoming, and it also has a flood safe mounted behind it to protect the air valve from floodwaters. This is an example of a 206C single body dual float. The center section of the valve has the large orifice and its float, and then over to the right is the smaller orifice. Basically, it's the Model 38 air release valve mechanism inside of this valve. A dual body is basically a air vacuum valve piped to an air release valve like the Model 38 shown here. This valve is very versatile for the customer because he can size the air vacuum valve between 1 inch and 20 inch independently of the air release valve. Here's an example of some air valves mounted on the discharge of pumps. If we look closer, we can see that next to the pump, there is a air vacuum valve and piped off of it is a Model 38 air release valve. Other types of air valves, like the one I just showed you, are called well service or pump service air valves. They're usually fitted with a throttling device on the outlet. That slows down the discharge of air so that there isn't a water hammer when the pipe column fills with water. Similarly, on pipelines that are subject to water hammer and such and very, very high high points, we might have a surge suppression air valve. It has a check valve underneath it, but the disc of the check valve has drilled holes in it, which throttles the airflow going out of the air valve in the pipeline so that the air valve does not slam closed. Another type of air valve is a vacuum breaker, which is kind of like an upside down check valve. It allows rapid inflow into the pipeline or thin wall steel pipe to keep it from collapsing but it lets the air out very slowly through the air release portion connected to that valve so that you reduce the chance of having a water hammer in your pipeline. We make most of our air valves in two types, one for clean water and one for wastewater. It's pretty obvious the main difference is that the wastewater body is very elongated. This helps prevent the sewage from getting up into the top works of the valve and clogging. The wastewater valve on the right also has a sloped bottom and a large two inch inlet to allow the wastewater or sewage to easily enter and leave the valve. Our wastewater air release valves come in two models, model 48A and 49A, where the 49A is just the larger sizes which have an orifice all the way up to one half inch in size. The air vacuum valve for the wastewater is of series 300A. It has two floats and a very long body, again, to prevent the sewage from getting up in the top portion of the valve. We also have a single body wastewater combination air valve, the model 800A, which has a long body stainless steel trim, but it has the same plug mechanism as the 201C. All of our wastewater valves are available in all stainless steel construction for long life when needed. The wastewater valves sometimes can get clogged with sewage and we offer a kit called a backwash cleaning kit. You can see in the diagram that it includes various ball valves and some rubber hose to allow the guy to pump clean water into the valve to flush it out. The backwash process consists of three simple steps. You close the isolation valve underneath the air valve. You open the drain valve and drain the valve. And number three, you pump clean water through that rubber hose to flush the valve clear, flush the valve clean. We did an interesting test about 10 years ago, right down the street at Salt Creek Sanitary District. We installed four of our wastewater air valves, model 802A, but we made one with bare interior coating, one with fusion interior coating, one with Teflon coating, and one with fusion bonded epoxy coating. We wanted to see which coating prevents clogging of the valve. So after three years, we took them apart and we saw in the upper left when the valve had no coating, it had severe coating of debris on the valve, uh, which might make it inoperable. Lower left, the Teflon was a little better. The bottom right, the epoxy was pretty good, but the best performing 
valve was fusion bonded epoxy, the blue coating in the upper right hand corner, and that is what we recommend to customers for their wastewater service to prevent fouling of the valve. Another application of air valves is on the top of the casing of the pump. Here we show an air release valve because the volute of the pump actually acts as a high point and can collect air and make the pump run inefficiently. We often supply combination air valves on the top of tanks. It's pretty obvious to fill a tank you got to get the air out so we use an air valve on top of that or when you want to drain a tank you got to let air back in and the combination air valves is a perfect solution to that problem. Here we show in a piping system in a building where a downward pointing elbow acts like a high point and an air release valve is often installed on that type of application. Another application is upstream of a flow meter. You could imagine if there's air bubbles in the pipeline and it's flowing through a flow meter, the flow meter may not provide very accurate flow rates. So we install an air release valve directly upstream of the flow meter to make the flow solid water and provide accurate results. Finally, a look at the competition. Probably the oldest manufacturer of air valves in the industry was APCO, who used to be in Schaumburg, but have moved to Texas. Crispin is a similar competitor. GA is an old, old uh, air valve producer that we actually helped develop their valve. They bought our valves with their name on it, but now they make their own. Recently, we had some foreign competition from Israel and South Africa, which makes some very unusual shaped air valves. Let's transition to products that supplement the air valve product line, first being the flood safe. The purpose of a flood safe is to protect the pipeline from flooding waters. Imagine that you have an air valve in a vault and the entire vault floods over and then you drain the pipeline and you need to draw air into the pipeline. But what's going to happen? You're going to draw contaminated flood water into your pipeline and the flood safe is designed to prevent that. Another way of solving the problem is connecting the outlet to the air valve to an inverted pipe outside the vault that won't be susceptible to flood water. However, now you're exposing, exposing the contents of the pipeline to the outside world where someone could contaminate the pipeline if they wanted to. So the best solution is to use a flood safe, which is the blue device in the vault next to the air valve. So as the water in the vault floods, the, the flood safe closes and prevents any of that flood water from going through the air valve and back into the pipeline. Therefore, uh, allowing us to have reliable, clean drinking water. To learn more about the flood safe, you can watch the video Making Your System Safe with the Valmatic Flood Safe on your desktop. We also make a two way air damper. These are designed in for cold climates in vaults where cold air may just flow into the into the vault and freeze the air valve or freeze the pipeline. So the air damper prevents that kind of convection flow and only lets flow in and out of the vault when the air valve is doing its function. You can see the frost safe is mounted on the inlet to the vault. Another product is a vent safe which helps prevent debris, birds, and anim animals from entering the vault and therefore possibly contaminating the water system. We can mount those on the end of the pipe that vents the vault or inside of the pipe so that no one can insert a hose and flood the vault with malicious intent. I want to thank you for listening to our talk about ear valves today. Hopefully it'll give you a little more appreciation of some of the products and how they make our drinking water safe in our communities.